Well, welcome to our modern online service. My name is Christopher Vaughn. I'm the pastor of Modern Worship, and we hope that this service blesses you and that you encounter God in a new way as you watch today. If you're ever in the Frisco area, I'd love to invite you to come and meet us on our campus. Our service times are online. And if you're watching this online from wherever you are in the world, we'd love to know who you are. And so there is a registration link in the description today, and we hope that you'll fill that out. Maybe put a prayer request. We'd love to know um, who's worshiping with us online today. So I hope this service blesses you. I hope that you encounter God in a new way today, and I look forward to seeing you again online soon. Well, welcome home to Modern Worship at Grace Avenue. We are so glad that you were joining us today. We're gonna worship together, and as we do, let's just feel alive in God. Let's sing this out together. I felt walls. I felt walls between us. By the cross, you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace, we are no longer bound. No longer bound. You call me shame you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me oh Good morning, everyone, and welcome home to Grace Avenue United Methodist Church. My name is Christopher Vaughn. I'm the pastor of Modern Worship here at Grace Avenue, and it is so good to be with you in worship today. There's going to be a link in the comment section. We'd ask you to register your attendance with us. This is really important because we want to know who's worshiping with us, and we want to be able to connect with you, tell you more about our church, but also to know what's going on in your life. The registration link is a great place to tell us uh, how we can be praying for you and how can we can be walking with you on this journey with God together. 
A really important reason to register today, though, is that we have these little journals. They're called uh, No Shortage of Joy journals, and if you register your attendance today, we're going to be delivering these to you um, this coming week. This is the last Sunday of our No Shortage of Joy series, and so as we celebrate that, we want to send these journals to you so that you can begin to write down the joyful moments, the gratitude moments that you find as you encounter God throughout the week. Our small group kickoff is going to be in two weeks. If you're not currently in a small group, we'd like to get you connected to a small group. A small group is any group or organization um, that meets outside of worship. And so um, as we are preparing for this kickoff, we really love to get you into a small group, whether you um, are in the area and you want to meet people in person safely, or if you are online and you are looking for an online small group community, we have a community for you. And so you can contact Kristen Lane at klane at graceavenue.org for more information about our small groups. If you are in the area and you are new to Frisco, we also have a new to Frisco group that's going to be meeting. Um, It's going to start Sunday, September the 12th. It's going to go several weeks into October. It'll be 2 to 3.30 p.m. right here on the main campus in Frisco. Um, And so I hope that you uh, will join us for that and get connected with that. It'll be uh, great ways to meet other people who are new to the area. We have a back-to-school clothing donation drive that we've been doing um, in partnership with Frisco ISD, and we will be accepting donations of new clothes all the way through September 6th. You can find more information about the clothing items that are needed on our website. Finally, we have a really exciting announcement. Um, Carol Petridis, our modern pastoral intern, is starting a fantasy football draft for modern. So if fantasy football is your thing, she's starting a Grace Avenue Modern Fantasy Football League. Draft night is going to be on Wednesday, September the 8th at 8.30 p.m. It's going to be online via Zoom. It is free to play. There's no money involved. Everyone is welcome. The winner is going to get a trophy that Carol has designed herself um, and bragging rights. So if you'd like to enter the modern um, Grace Avenue Fantasy Football Draft, you can email carol at graceavenue.org. I hope you'll join with us in this very fun um, activity. Finally, there is going to be a Connect meeting tonight. If you're interested in knowing more information about our church and maybe how you can become a member of our church, I want to invite you to our Connect meeting. It's going to be in Tom Graves Hall at 6.30 p.m. tonight, um, and there will be child care available if you need it. If you're interested in joining our church and you are part of our online community, I hope that you will reach out to me, Christopher at graceavenue.org. I'd love to meet you via Zoom and talk more about how you can become a member uh, online. Finally, we're going to continue our worship today with the lighting of the Christ candle. We light this candle every week as a reminder of Christ's light in the world and the hope that Christ offers to us, and also as a reminder of the Holy Spirit connecting us across the distances, as a reminder of the way that the Holy Spirit unites us as a worshiping community and how the Holy Spirit brings us all together. And so now we're going to continue our worship with the reading of the community values. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carol Petridis, and I am the modern pastoral intern here at Grace Avenue. If you would please join me in reading our community values. Here in modern at Grace Avenue, we gather as a unified community from all walks of life. Without exception, we belong. We affirm and embrace people from every race, ethnicity, age, economic status, marital status, gender or sexual identity, ability or faith background because all people reflect the face of God. Without exception, we belong. We seek to embody God's grace and justice in our community and in our world, and we recognize that historically the church hasn't always done that. Part of our work together is to help right some of those wrongs. Without exception, we belong. In this space, we bring our full selves, we engage our minds, we struggle with our doubts, we cultivate sustainability, and we carry one another's burdens. Without exception, we belong. together higher than the mountains
This morning we are going to sing a song together that um, that I wrote about a month ago. It's just it's such a cool thing to get to take a song that I wrote and come and play it with this awesome band. We are just so lucky, so blessed as a community to have all of these amazing people to lead us in worship. So we're going to sing this song called Goodness All Around. And I wrote this song about the fact that we believe that the core of God is good and that the core of humanity is good. There is inherent goodness all around us and the source of all of those things. If the name God is confusing for you or just too wrought with baggage, maybe you use words like source or the universe. That force is so good. It loves us. It is a benevolent source pulling all things towards all things towards itself. My favorite part of the song hits in the bridge. And the beginning part of the bridge says, I'm swimming in an ocean of grace and it never required my faith. When I wrote the song, I was in, you know, I was in a good place. All things were coming up Wendy. 
Everything was great, and it was so easy to see the goodness all around. But there are times, and I am experiencing a time in my life now when things, it's hard to see the goodness. I've had some tragedy in my family in the last couple of weeks where we've lost a loved one, and one of my cousin is fighting for her life still in the ICU. Things have been really, really painful and really hard. And we, when we find ourselves in those seasons of suffering, I see us swimming in an ocean of grace and it doesn't require anything from us. It doesn't require our faith. That goodness is still around us even when we feel like we are in the depths. When it's really hard to see that goodness, we still know that God loves us. We still know that that source is good. So as we sing this song this morning, wherever you find yourself, if you're like, things are good and I have so much to be grateful for and I have so much joy in my life, then I hope this song meets you there. And if you are in a time where things are hard and tragedy has hit your life or things just feel heavy or you can't figure out why you can't just click in, things are not going right, man, I hope this song meets you there too and helps remind you that there is nothing you have to do that the ocean of grace is all around us, that goodness is around us, and it doesn't require anything from us. We can just sit in the presence of that goodness and sit in the presence of God. And so I hope that you like this song. We are gonna sing it together this morning. You guys ready? Here we go, let's sing it. this out together. The endless sky shows me. The endless sky shows me. The ocean sing an ancient melody. The universe pulls me. Come see the beauty. Come see the beauty. Oh. I'm swimming in an ocean of grace. I'm swimming in an ocean of grace. It never required my faith. The presence of God is just here. Wow. 
you can feel it near. I pray for a heart that's open. My life is just one of billions, and we all make the same sound. This goodness all around. Our scripture reading today comes to us from John 15, 1 through 11. Hear now the word of the Lord. I am the true vine, and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce oh, sorry, likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Roseboom. I'm the youth minister here at Grace Avenue United Methodist Church, um, and I am blessed to be able to uh, be bringing our message this morning, um, and I'm very glad that you're all here in worship with us today. So over the past few weeks, we have been talking about this John chapter 15 passage that Carol just read for us. We've been comparing and contrasting our delivery systems with God's delivery system. Right now, it really feels like we are in a time of shortages. Uh, there's a shortage of cars, there's a shortage of construction materials, there's even a shortage of chicken. And the things that are in stock are harder to get. Supply chains are slower, delivery dates are further out, things are being delayed or just aren't in stock. The quick and easy delivery of stuff isn't as quick and easy as we have become used to over the years. But luckily, as we've been talking about in this series, God has a different delivery system. And God's delivery system isn't bound to our human circumstances. God's delivery system has none of these glitches and delays that we are seeing in our delivery systems. And therefore, as our scripture today tells us, there is no shortage of joy in the world, even if it feels like there is a shortage of just about everything else. So this morning, I really want to focus on verse 11 of our scripture, in which Jesus says, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. I think this verse is really important because this verse is the point of the whole passage. This verse is why the rest of it matters. Jesus has been talking about staying connected to the vine, staying connected to God, bearing fruit, and loving others. And then he tells us that he said these things, he gave those instructions so that our joy may be complete. 
Staying connected to God and Jesus, loving others, bearing fruit will bring joy. It will bring a complete joy. And who wouldn't want complete joy in their lives? I don't know about y'all, but I chase joy all the time. I bought watermelon Sour Patch Kids on my grocery run this weekend because they bring me joy. I have a playlist of songs that I like to sing at the top of my lungs in my car because it brings me joy. I rewatch my favorite TV shows over and over again because they bring me joy. I think, though, that the kind of joy that Jesus is talking about here is deeper and more fulfilling than the joy that I get from candy or from an episode of Parks and Rec. I think the joy that Jesus is talking about here is closer to the kind of joy we feel when we help someone in need, when we show love to a neighbor, when we have a sudden moment of clarity about God's presence in our lives, when we see our work and our calling finally bearing fruit. That is closer to the kind of deep, overwhelming joy that Jesus is promising here. But I wanna be clear about something before we go on. When I'm talking about joy, I'm not saying that you should be happy every moment of your life. I'm not saying that if you experience times of anger or sadness or grief that something is wrong with you or something is wrong with your faith. We are meant to experience the full range of emotions through our lives. We are gonna go through things that are less than joyful. Expecting Christians to be happy all the time because God's got us is toxic positivity and isn't helpful. What I do want you to hear me say is that God can handle all of our emotions and experiences, not just the joyful and happy ones. If we are using the vine metaphor that Jesus does in the scripture, even in the harsher seasons, the branches are still connected to the vine and the vine is still sustaining the branches. This joy that we are talking about is more than just happiness. It's a deep, sustaining attitude of rejoicing that persists even in hard times. It comes from following Jesus' example of love the best we can and knowing that nothing can separate us from God's love. Jesus shows us what this life looks like. Like with so many other things, Jesus doesn't just give instructions. He gives an example of what life looks like when we are following those instructions. So in verse 10, Jesus says, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in God's love. Jesus tells us that he is an example to follow in this. When we pattern our lives after Jesus' example, when we do our best to show love to people the way that Jesus does, we can experience this deeper attitude of joy in our lives. And as we've talked about throughout this series, God's system for delivering this joy is so different than the delivery systems that we are used to in our lives. There's no shortage of joy to be experienced when we are connected to God in the way that branches are connected to a vine. I really like this vine metaphor that Jesus uses here because I think it's really helpful to understanding how God works. Um, Instead of thinking about this as a delivery system, instead of thinking about this as something that, okay, your order is received and then it goes to uh, the the warehouse and someone goes and finds your thing and tapes it up nice in the box and then someone else puts it on the truck and then drives to your house and then puts it on your porch. There's all these different places where that system can break down. But this vine metaphor um, shows how integrated we are and can be with God. Jesus says that he is the vine and we are the branches. The branches are connected to the body of the vine and it's through, through the stem of that vine that nutrients flow to the branches and leaves and sustain them um, and make them able to bear fruit. They're all connected into one system and so the larger plant is always providing energy and sustenance to the branches. And the same is true of God. God is always present with us and is always supplying love and grace and joy. This is what we mean when we say that God's delivery system is different than those that we are used to in the world. There's no supply gap or unforeseen shortages with God. Instead, there's God's everlasting and abiding presence. 
The part, though, of God's delivery system that is similar to something like Amazon is the fact that we play a role in both. When something I ordered finally arrives through the shortages and the delays, I still have to go out onto my porch and bring it in. If I don't know that a package is coming, I don't always know that I need to go look for it. Uh, Luckily, at my house, um, I have this really cool alarm system that helps alert me to when my package has arrived. Um, I think Ashley has a picture of it for you to see um, this morning. Uh, My particular model is a big lab shepherd mix named Ruby. Uh, I know some of y'all also have this model. Some of y'all have the lab model or the terrier model or the chihuahua, um, the mutt, whatever you have. But at our house, Our dog, Ruby, is the self-appointed package delivery alarm. I don't know how she does it, because our front door is solid. There's no way she can see out. But if she starts randomly barking at the door, nine times out of 10, I open the door, and there's a package waiting for me and a delivery person driving off. If I'm not expecting a package, I can rely on Ruby and other things, like Amazon notifications and emails, to let me know that it's here and that my order has been fulfilled. The problem then with God's delivery service is that I have to rely on myself to recognize when that joy is fulfilled. What I mean by that is this. We are promised joy. We are promised God's presence in our lives. But I don't have a dog that can bark at the door and alert me when that joy has come. I don't have an Amazon delivery person sending me a picture of my porch and saying, here's where we dropped off the answer to that prayer, it's hidden behind the plant. To know that our joy is complete, to feel that joy that we are promised, we have to be able to recognize it for what it is when it comes. So often, God does not answer our prayers in the way that we expect. So often, we get caught up in the waiting for the thing that we get stuck there and we miss the experience altogether. I was listening to an episode of Rob Bell's podcast, uh, and he had a guest on it who's a Christian author and speaker named Alexander Shia. And in this episode, Alexander Shia said something really interesting that at first kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. He said that hope isn't necessarily helping us. That when you're hoping for something, You're always looking somewhere out there to the future. And you miss now. And Christianity is always about now. So when I first heard this, I thought, who the heck does this guy think he is? Hope is vitally important. But the more I thought about it, the more I think the principle of what he's saying is true. He's saying that if we're always looking towards the future and what is coming next, then we are already living there instead of living here in the moment and experiencing what is happening now. I think that this applies to this fulfillment of joy that we are talking about this morning. If we are always waiting for the joy to come, we can miss it when it comes. If we are always looking to the future and waiting, we don't actually get to enjoy the joy. If we never take a step back and live into the moment, and truly experience and appreciate the joy, then we've missed out on the whole point. This is really the only flaw in God's delivery system. It's up to us to recognize and experience this joy. So how do we do this? I think it can be different for everyone. The ways in which we all experience God's presence in our lives are different. So something that works for me won't necessarily work for you. I think it starts with mindfulness, though. If we aren't aware that we are missing the moment, we won't be able to do anything about it. So maybe for you, being present in the now looks like setting aside some time to be alone in nature. Maybe it looks like reading scripture more regularly. Maybe it looks like taking up meditation or breathing exercises. Maybe this no shortage of joy journal that's gonna get delivered can help you start to do this. Whatever that is for you, I encourage you to find something that helps you be present in the now. To stop always looking towards the future and what is coming next and see how God is already working in your life. 
when we can start to do this, we can start to experience this fulfillment of joy that Jesus promises us. Because guys, it's already here. God is always with us. And it's up to us to stop and actually notice God and live into this fullness of complete joy. Amen. Powerful message and a good reminder. Thank you, Sarah. What a gift to have Sarah with us today. And now will you join with me in prayer? Let us pray together. God, our world seems to be falling apart. There are so many terrible things that happen at once that we seem to forget from week to week just how bad things can be. So many things have happened that we have almost forgotten about the earthquake in Haiti that has devastated so many. And so for the people of Haiti, for those who are responding to the tragedy in Haiti, we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers this week for Afghanistan, for the turmoil, for the loss of life, for the fear and insecurity. We watch it all unfold and we grieve. And we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up prayers for those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, for health, for loss of life, for losses of livelihood, for continued struggles. We say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we ask your protection for those who are in the path of Hurricane Ida. We have seen hurricanes like this come in the past, and we know what we are expecting. And so we lift up prayers to you, and we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of mercy, God of love, you know us so well. We like to think that we can hide from you, but we are just kidding ourselves. You have offered to us a new life characterized by honesty and compassion and joy and peace, and you have invited us into ministries of peace and justice. But we have far too often turned our back on opportunities for service and witness to your transformational love. So forgive us for our stubbornness. Help us to turn around and listen to your words of hope and remind us again that you require compassion and mercy in all who serve you. May you guide our steps and our lives, and give us courage to truly be your witness in the world. Compassionate God, we like to think that all we have to do to be religious, to follow you, is to speak the words, but really we have to walk the walk. We can get so caught up in our rituals and our rules that we forget the essence of your word for us. We forget that we are called to truly be people of peace and not just to speak the words, but to practice lives of compassion and hope. And so many times in this world, we are challenged to take sides one against the other, but this is contrary to your will. You call us to stand for mercy and justice and love and forgiveness and hope and peace. You want us to be your people who care deeply for others and about our world. So help us to be ready to truly and joyfully serve you, O oh God. Free us from selfishness and self-centeredness. Lift us to live lives of peace. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've now come to the part of our service where we invite you to scan the QR code or click the link in the comments section to make an offering to partner with us in contributing to the missions of our church. We've done some fantastic work with vaccination clinics and many other missions that further our goal to give everyone a spiritual, emotional, and physical home. 
Um, related to missions, I wanted to touch on some things that Christopher mentioned in the prayer um, about how we are responding to the needs in Afghanistan and Haiti. We're partnering with, partnering with the United Methodist Committee on Relief and the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services groups um, in order to help address some of these um, needs that are coming up in our world. If you'll visit our homepage, there is a link on the main um, page, and it's a Waves of Grace icon. If you click there, you can learn more about how to get involved with uh, those needs as well. supply now and forever and all my hope and all my joy is found in you all your mercy rushing Oh 
Well, what a privilege it has been to be with you in worship today. I wanted to take just a moment of uh, pastoral privilege. Um, I didn't get to say anything earlier, um, but we're always reminded of what a gift it is to have Wendy um, with us leading worship, but especially so when we have something unveiled like her song, Goodness All Around. What a gift. Um, and what a powerful testament to the way that God is with us in our lives. I hope that you will come back to this service throughout the week and just find that song and just listen to it over and over and over again. I know that's what I'll be doing this week. You won't hear it on the radio, so if you want to find it again, you'll just have to click the service and come back to it. What a gift, Wendy. Thank you so much. So, and we also had a powerful message brought to us by Sarah. What a gift to have Sarah with us preaching today. I'm going to let her take us out with a blessing and benediction. Sarah? As we go into our weeks, into our daily lives, um, I hope that you will find a way to recognize God's presence and the joy in our lives. Find something, some way to live in the now and experience the fullness of joy that God has in store for all of us. As we go from this place and this time of worship, go with the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And wherever life takes you this week, I hope you find your way back home to Grace Avenue. Go in peace. Amen.